Hello, I'm Johnny Wilson with ePlan USA, and today I'm going to be going through the top five questions that were submitted to the ePlan Solution Center in June 2020. Number five, the auto connecting feature is not working. So, if your auto connecting is not working, it is most likely due to the symbols not being placed exactly on the grid. So, let's have a look here. If we zoom in, we can see these terminals are slightly offset from the grid. So, I'm going to make sure that I have a few settings enabled. So I'm going to enable this grid, so grid C. And in the bottom corner, you can see I'm on a four millimeter grid. So I'm then going to enable the grid and make sure snap to grid is on. And then I'm going to hold down shift and control and then drag over everything on this page. And then I'm going to use the align on grid button here. As you can see, that shifted everything and now everything is perfectly aligned on the grid. So auto connecting will be working. If you're working in a half inch environment, your grid setting needs to be on the half inch setting down here. Number four, the data portal is not opening. When we go to utilities, data portal, nothing happens. Utilities, as you can see, nothing is happening. And this is due to the fact that the uh, the data portal was most likely opened on someone's second monitor and they no longer have that monitor connected. To fix this, we can go to view and workspace and what we can do is just re-enable the default one here. So it's just gonna think about it for a second. And now when I open the data portal, it is restored back to its default position. Number three, how do we transfer a potential through a black box? Sometimes it is desirable to transfer the potential across the device connection points of a black box. For instance, a volt-free contact. So I'm going to look at the potential tracking and I can see the potential goes from fuse two to device connection point one. To transfer the potential from device connection point one to two, what we can do is we'll turn off the potential tracking and then double click and edit the properties. So on the, the symbol slash function data tab, we can edit the logic. I'm gonna use colon and then the pin number, which is two in this case, and then hit okay. And then if we re-enable the potential tracking, we can now see the potential goes through from pin one through to pin two. Number two, how do we enable the project grouping colors? To add custom groupings to projects, you can go to options and then settings. You want to navigate to user and then display to project groups. Here we can define different project groups. So here I'm going to do a custom one and I'm going to give it the color pink and then activate it. From there we need to go to the project setting. So I'm going to go to this macro project and then go to display. I'm going to assign it a project group. So for this one, I'm going to use macro project, hit apply, and as you can see, it is now colored orange. If we want to change this one, we can do the same. So we'll call this one custom. Now you can see it's pink. Number one, how do we install a local SQL server? So when installing SQL Server on a local machine, uh, first we want to check which versions are currently working with ePlan, so 2016 and 2017. So I'm going to go to the official Microsoft website and I'm going to use SQL Server Express and then I'm just going to download the installer here. I'm going to pop this on my desktop. So I'm just going to double click on the installer. And then let's select the basic installation type and then we're going to accept all the default settings here. So once the installation has been completed, you want to make sure that you write down this string here. So I'm going to copy mine to my clipboard and then close it. So let's move into ePlan and let's go to Utilities, Parts and then Management. We want to go down to extras and go to settings 
and then we're going to use this radio button for SQL Server and click the new. We're going to paste in the string that we copied earlier and then we're going to give the parts database a name so I'm just going to call mine parts and then we're going to hit enter. So that's going to create the database so now when I click OK you can see I'm now in a new empty parts database.